Hello and welcome to a new episode of my dev blog for my traffic simulation game. In this video I talk about what I have done since the last dev blog, which includes saving the game and um, rendering text and also a new system for the road intersections. So let's start by looking at the Okay, saving the game. So if I just close this, start it again, it will load the same objects as we had before, all, all the roads and everything has been saved. We can also edit the road network, for example, by connecting this mall to the road. And if we exit, then the game will save. So when we start again, this road will be there. So of course, this will, option will be needed to be added to some sort of menu to, to give the opportunity to load different saves and saving several save games. Currently just loads and saves from a hard-coded file name that I will do for now. So the way the save functionality works is very simple. I just save all the different data that uh, the game uses to represent the nodes and the malls and everything in order to to file. And uh, then I just load it up in the same same order. Can I have a quick look at the code? So basically I just use this C functions to in interface with the, the file system, the F open and the F write. Uh, so I open the, the save file and write all the all the data that I want to save. So for example, all the vertices for the roads and all the and all the position of the nodes and all the connections of the nodes. And the parking lots and, and everything. And then the load function is down here and it simply just loads the data in the same order into the same uh, variables that I was saving in the save, save function. It's really sim simple. Just need to make sure that the order is correct. And for the font for the text rendering. Uh, I have basically two files here. First is the font.asm. So this is simply just an assembly data data file. file. So this is the actual font texture for my bitmap font. So this contains all the bytes for all, uh, representing all the pixels for all the characters for that font. And then I have this other file called font characters, which is the data for each character in the font. So all of these different values represent positions in the, in the, in the texture and kerning information and stuff like that. And have a look at. I can see the actual struct for, for a font for a font character, which it has an ID which corresponds to the to which character it is and some UV coordinates from the texture and width and height and offsets between the characters when you put them after each other. So this font texture and the character information is then used together with a vertex shader and a pixel shader that uses the character information to pick the correct coordinates a sample from the texture and then can render any general string like this. So currently I'm using it uh, mainly for uh, debugging information, just printing out some debugging text so you can easier find any issues. And speaking of debugging information, let me just enable some intersection debugging and I can show you the new intersection 
behavior. So also since last time I rewrote the um, car in, uh, interaction behavior or the intersection system. So previously all the cars they knew each other from a grid and they could so each car had a position in a grid and they could ask the grid are there any cars around me. This works pretty well and, and the car could, could break if the car was in the way in front of them. But it didn't handle the intersection well and it wasn't as performant. So now the, uh, all the cars belong to a node instead so, so a car can ask yeah, the node which other cars are uh, on, on the same road so, so they can so, so they can know which which uh, cars should I watch out for and then when they enter an intersection they will they will try to to lock the the path they wish to to go so that's what these red lines are showing so for example here now when the cars come here they lock the path uh, they want to go and, and uh, then any other car cannot, cannot go in a path that crosses over that one. So this allows, this makes sure that the cars aren't colliding with each other in the intersection. So only two, only paths that don't, that don't cross can go simultaneously and otherwise they have to wait. So currently one limitation of the system is that only one car can occupy this line at once even though in this type of intersection maybe two or three cars could, could fit. So the throughput is still quite low in, in this intersection. So that will probably be some future improve, improvements of this system. But it works, works well for now. There's no more deadlocks. Uh, being caused and, and uh, the car generally don't uh, go through each other anymore. That was it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.